Today I'll be giving some more detail on the ramp up of outreach in our equity communities starting next week. Detail a little bit about the 4.7 million best value grant awards and highlight additional PEBT support for families across the Commonwealth. Archipelago Strategies Group, which is a certified minority woman owned business and healthcare for all have been working closely with the Department of Public Health and our equity communities to build a robust outreach program tailored to meet the needs of each community. Starting next week, over 200 bilingual locally hired community organizers will hold 83 outreach events in neighborhoods across each of our 20 equity communities for business walks and door-to-door -door canvassing. It's like a political campaign, except it's vaccine canvassing. And we'll also start phone banking efforts to support vaccine appointment registrations. The best value grant funding is meant to put funding directly into the hands of these communities. You don't often hear us use the term best value grant. So what that means is literally a direct grant to the city without formal application and the like. For Chelsea, as you heard the governor said, this means just about $150,000 for the city to support vaccine initiatives as you determine what is needed best. The funding is uh, from today through June 30th. These resources are essential to getting folks vaccinated, to deal with vaccine hesitancy, and our other, but they have other key resources necessary to support our vulnerable communities and populations. Community grassroots organizations like Collaborativa have kept our disproportionately impacted communities going throughout this pandemic. Their communities look to them for guidance, strength, truth, and support. And having just toured the food pantry down the street, you have delivered. But I want to be really clear to everyone here, it is not a food pantry. La Collaborativa is true to its word. It's about community. The food pantry is just a way to open the door to individuals and meet whatever it is they need for food, housing, support, education, filling out, filling out applications, whatever it is, it is truly wraparound. And I'm sure you will describe that much more eloquently than I did it. In the fall, La Collaborativa received about $58,000 through our COVID-19 community grants to ensure that you could continue lifting up your community. So I can't tell you how much you're going to get next week, but next week that grant will be continued. The Department of Public Health did not want me to take their thunder, but I assure you it will be continued as of next week. Additionally, Chelsea has received over $1.5 million in funding for food security and to combat hunger in their community during the pandemic, in addition to the food truck for you. Finally, I just want to mention about PEBT because we know food insecurity and getting money into the hands of families is so important. Massachusetts was the third state in the country to receive federal approval to expand pandemic EBT, known as PEBT, to an estimated 96,000 children under six on SNAP and to increase all SNAP benefits by 15%. I know this is something very important to Senator DiDomenico. PEBT was created by the federal government to supplement food budgets for children who normally receive free and reduced price lunch at school. The approval of our plan to expand PEBT to families with young children support our youngest residents for whom access to nutritious food is vital for healthy growth and development. On March 25th, eligible households received $136 in PEBT benefits for the month of February on their SNAP cards. To date, we have helped more than 550,000 students and their families buy food, bringing over $396 million of additional federal dollars into the state to support in food purchasing power. With in-person learning returning in Massachusetts, it's possible that the benefits will be reduced. However, children are still eligible for SNAP, WIP, WIC, and other nutrition supports, and we encourage them to apply, and we will work with you closely to make sure that happens. And I just want to echo the governor's remarks about Easter and Passover weekend. Please, if you do celebrate, celebrate responsibly, safely, and smallly, if that's a word. It's important to continue to wear a face covering, limit your interactions with your closest, and engage in physical distancing. And please get tested if you feel sick 
or think you've been exposed to COVID. Testing is free, widely available, with over 400 testing sites across the Commonwealth. And we are adding additional free testing sites in our equity communities. Finally, a housekeeping item. Due to the end of Passover and this weekend being Easter Sunday, there will be no daily COVID-19 dashboard posted Sunday, April 4th. The Sunday data will be posted the following day, Monday, April 5th, and that report will include two days worth of data. Remember, practice your bubble fidelity this weekend and be safe.